Hey guys, welcome to the chapter six simulator exercises video. So chapter six is all about holding patterns and I have a couple of suggestions for you in this exercise. Basically, I think you should start by going to the Milton VOR, which is MIP. It is on the frequency of 109.2. Now, you can't see it because it's off to my other screen, but on X-Plane here, what I'm actually doing is I can click on it and just say, please tune my number one VOR to that. I can also come over here, and if I click on my Garmin 530 here, it will let me bring this up like so, so I can see it a little bit better. And you'll notice it says VLOC1 is set to 109.2, it's set to VLOC mode. You can also see here that the nav light is on, indicating that the CDI is hooked up to the right thing. I'll go ahead and close that. So if you are also using X-Plane, just a little tip there. So here's what I suggest. Uh, first thing you can do is start with something easy. Fly to the Milton VOR. We did that in the previous video. And then from there, you want to execute a hold. So we're going to be pretty much going toward the west when we get to the Milton VOR, a little bit northwest-ish, but mostly west. And what you want to do when you get there is we'll start with something simple, a direct entry hold. So the instructions might be something like this, hold east of the Milton VOR on the 090 radial and we'll just say that I'm going to be at uh, 4,000 feet. All right, so I'm going to climb up to 4,000 feet, right turns. So that's going to be a standard hold with right turns. And what I want you to do is see if you can get into that hold, you know, fly around a couple of times and see how you can do, you know, with your timing and things like that. Once you think that you have that down, what you could do for your second exercise is you could exit the hold and then come back in for the same hold. So exit the hold, fly outbound toward the west for say two minutes past the hold, just turn around and then do either a parallel entry or a teardrop entry to get back into your hold. Discussed before, the preferred entry would be if you went strictly based on what it says, uh, most likely parallel. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and try a parallel entry and just see how much fun it is to try to get on course in time. And then, you know, do the same thing with a teardrop entry. Essentially three things that you can try in order to you know, practice your holds and make sure that you understand them. Now, if you really wanted a fourth thing to do, uh, of course, you can always say, well, these are too easy for me, so I'm going to start cranking in some wind. I would certainly recommend that you try that. You could try something easy like a direct headwind out of the west or a tailwind out of the east and see how you do with that with adjusting for the times. And from there, you could move on to having winds that are somewhat of a crosswind and adjust for your drift. And if that's not enough for you, you can always add to that a little bit more. So you could fly your hold that I gave you, and then you could fly out for a couple of minutes and then come back and then try to do a different hold, you know, maybe one to the north or to the south. And just, you know, see how you do with flying holds and coming at it from different directions. So you could really spend some serious time on this exercise and you could end up being really good at holds. Okay, so here I am now. I am almost to the VOR. So remember all of our little T's. We had turn, time, 
twist throttle talk. So as soon as I cross over this VOR, I'm going to start my turn to heading of east. And we're going to time once we finish the turn. Twist. I'm going to go ahead and twist in my inbound radial of 270. And then throttle, I'm going to maintain 4,000 feet, and there's nothing to tell. So pretty much as soon as I cross over, I'm going to start my turn toward my outbound heading of 090. And then I'm going to go ahead and at some point I'm going to twist in 270. And then I am going to stay at 4,000. And call that a day and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and recommend that once you, again, once you get here, fly a couple of holds and then maybe fly outbound and come back and try to re-intercept. So I still have a two indication and I'm going right over my fix now. Just flipped from to to from going to start my standard rate turn and I'm going to the right so I'm going to turn to my heading of 090 you know if I wanted to I could use my heading bug I might want to use my heading book as well if I was trying to let the autopilot fly this for me. If I was being what we call lazy. So as soon as I finish this turn, I will go ahead and start my timer. I actually have a timer on my yoke, which of course you can't see in this video. All right, so coming up on my east heading, rolling out. So I turned, going to start my timer. Now in my case, I might cheat a little bit and pause the simulator, but I'm actually not going to do that right now just because that'll mess up my time. So what I'm going to do, I normally if I was actually flying this, what I would do here is I would fly out for my minute and I would twist it while I was flying out but you know it's a simulator and you know those things aren't quite as nice because for one thing I don't have a physical knob to turn so I'm gonna to have to try to click on to the screen here in a little bit alright and I'm at 47 seconds coming up on my turn so my turn should be right about now so I'm going to pause and I'm going to go ahead and close this as well I don't really need that and now I'm going ahead and twisting and while I'm paused since it's getting kind of dark in here I might actually turn up some of the lights at least try to this might be one of those things for another day because doesn't seem to be terribly happy with me in my attempts to turn up the lights so I guess I'll just have to deal with it okay so I turned I timed I flown my outbound leg I twisted and now I'm ready to turn again and I'm going to turn to my heading of west and then I will start my timer once I roll out from that turn and I'm going to fly hopefully for about a minute inbound so let's see how that goes I'm flying my inbound leg so we're flying inbound intercepting that radial boom there we go one minute 
Restart our turn again. The turn. As soon as we finish our turn, and start our timer. Now again, technically you're supposed to start your outbound time when you're a beam. How do you know when you're a beam? Well, it should shift from to to from. Starting my timer. By the way, if anyone's wondering, I just updated my OS and I didn't recalibrate my joystick here, which seems like it's being a problem for me, or actually my yoke, I should say. So. And so now we're going to turn inbound, step that radial again. Remember, when you're flying outbound, you're going to get reverse sensing. It says, hey, you need to go to the left, but that's because I lied to the VOR. And I've dialed in 270, but I'm going generally eastbound, or at least I was until I started to turn around. So there's my west heading. Pull out a little early. I start my inbound timer. I'm trying to intercept that inbound heading. And what do I want to do here? I want to intercept my inbound heading. I've got that needle centered now, so let me go ahead and go a little bit to the right because you'll notice that needle is slowly drifting that way. Still have a two indication. I'm getting right on top of it, so things are getting really sensitive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to fly out a few minutes. And I'm going to do my pattern, uh, holding pattern entry and come back around. I sort of time warp myself back to the fix. I'm going to do a parallel entry, fly out. Found, video, and then I'm going to turn the wrong way. Now remember, with the parallel, this is where you have the really big turnaround. So, coming up on my minute. All right, there it is. Starting my turn to the left. Because I'm turning the wrong way again. It's going to be a turn that is greater than 180 degrees. Go a little bit past west here. And re intercept. Try that as an intercept. My inbound timer. Even though I have a decent intercept angle here, I'm still not catching it just yet. So let me go ahead and increase that a bit. Go, and we've actually passed it, and yet we still never got that needle to center. There it goes. I go ahead and start my turn for my outbound leg. And this would be just a normal leg. All right. So you can see what I was talking about before when I said there's a lot of reasons why if you are flying from the airport, say, back to some sort of fix and you're trying to turn around and you're going to exit that hold and go back to the airport, that's another place where I definitely like the teardrop instead of the parallel. Finish my turn. I'm going to start my timer. And you know the rest. Now I've reset myself, so I'm coming in for another one. And this time I'm going to do a teardrop. So remember, Lars, left add, right subtract. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in toward my fix. And once I get there, I'm going to fly outbound. But I'm going to take, since this is right turns, I'm going to subtract 30 from my outbound heading of 90. And I'm going to fly heading of 60. And I'm going to fly that for a minute. And 
you'll see that it will give me much less of a dramatic turnaround that I'm going to have to do as compared with the parallel. And I will hopefully get much, much quicker onto my fix. So I'll go ahead and unpause and fly that now. Right up on my fix. Till I'm a beam it, there it goes. Start my timer. I'm gonna turn to zero six zero. I could have waited to start my timer. Because again, I want to do turn time, twist, throttle, talk. So turn, finish my turn, started my timer, twist. There's nothing to twist. I'm still looking for that 270 inbound. Throttle, I'm trying to stay at 4,000-ish. And I'm just waiting for my minute. Minute. I'm going to turn to the right and go ahead and try to intercept my radio. Would you look at that? Notice that when I stopped turning. I don't quite have the needle centered, but it's definitely a lot closer than I was for the teardrop. So now I'm going to start my inbound leg, and you all know the rest. All right. So those are a couple of things you can try if you have a simulator at home to play with that'll help you a little bit with holding patterns. So I hope you enjoyed this.